Right, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to be talking about programming paradigms. And programming paradigms are the style you use to program. So we'll learn a couple of those today. So formally, this is the definition of that from Wikipedia, the concepts and abstractions used to represent the elements of a program, for example, objects, functions, variables, and constraints, et cetera, and the steps that compose a computation, assignment, evaluation, continuation, data flow, all these are complicated words, but it means the style you use to program a computer. And most of you have only seen the way we're programming a computer, which is through Snap, so it's hard for you to kind of get a sense of other ones. So today I'm going to try to share with you other ways that you might want to be able to program a computer. The style is the paradigm. The first is a functional model. And this is, again, the third time we've seen this slide. This is all a review. We're talking about the world is only functions that have inputs and a single output, and you compose them together in clever ways. So here is this function f that you're trying to write, and itself it's written by composing other functions together. So I'm going to borrow the plus function and the square root function and the multiply function and then feed the data like this in this way. What I've added is on the bottom corner, you'll see the code that actually embodies that function in Snap. So you can think of that as being this picture where data flows like this, or if you just think about the expression that Snap is, that's a little easier. Okay, so that's functional models. Again, very standard. We've seen it before many times. And remember, no state, no side effects, and no mutation. Those are the three things, okay? Same input, same output, all, re all, re all, all you've seen before. Ooh, new idea. This is called imperative programming. And imperative programming is like a recipe. The picture I've shown here is because I think of it like a recipe. First, break the eggs then scramble them, then add some chives, and then put them on a pot. And then hit. So it's all these steps. So it's called imperative. Another word for this is called sequential. So it's a sequential nature. You're doing one after the other, after the other, after the other. So if you were to try to recreate that same function over here, so f of x equals x plus 3 times square root of x, the way you could do that is by saying, here's the procedure right here, f of x. Answer equals x. Let's just start with answer. The guy, I'm going to return an answer. But I say answer equals x. Uh-oh, there's an equal sign. Already we're not functional, because I've used an equal sign. You're not allowed to have an equal sign in any assignment in a functional model. So assignment, all of a sudden you know you're, not, you're out of the functional world. It's answer equals x. So we start with the answer. I'm going to return answer. So I've already, I'm going to give you at least x back. And then if I say answer equals square root of answer, what does that do? Well, that says that now it's the square root of x, because remember, answer was x a second ago, so now answer is square root of x. So I kind of, I'm working my way through my computation. Answer equals x plus 3 times answer. And now, all of a sudden, I'm done with my computation. If I return answer, I'm returning the quantity x plus 3 times square root of x. So that's kind of a way to have some assignments, some stages. And you might think about why that's the reason why we can't parallelize imperative and sequential programs very easily, is because you have these stages, and these stages all have, what's the word to say? The stages all have kind of a step. You can't just say, well, I've done three, four steps to do my algorithm, and I can't, they can't come out of order. There's a particular order that's required. When you send machine com computation to many machines, they come back out of order. Because that machine's faster, the network is slow there, the disk is really slow there, that machine's bogged down with computation. So you have to be able to handle work out of order, which is why functional stuff is so beautiful, because there was no, there's no order to those things. In the flow, I'll go back a picture. In this flow, it didn't matter whether the square root happened before the plus, right? Think about that. Here's the flow of the, of the data through that, through that kind of a box. It didn't matter which happened first. At the end, the time is going to wait for both of those to be ready, and when they're both ready, they'll come out and do the right thing. It didn't matter whether there's an order here. But look at this stage. Look at this answer equals answer. If you send each of those lines to a different machine, you can't have them come back, and it doesn't make sense. You needed the, re the results from the earlier step to be able to work with the next step. So you can't parallelize sequential or imperative programs as easily. You can do it in little limited cases. All right. So, so far what we've seen is an introduction to what the idea of a programming paradigm is. It's the style of programming, the style of taking your thoughts and embodying them in code. We've seen the functional model, and we've seen the imperative model. All right. Next video, we'll talk about two more models. Thanks.